what do we know about the crown that Queen Camilla will wear at Charles's coronation? Hello everyone, welcome to Royal Fashion News. My name is Brittany and today we are talking about Queen Mary's crown which will be used by Queen Camilla during the coronation of King Charles. So this was one first used in the early 1900s for the coronation of King George V, so that was Mary's husband. And now it's gonna be reused for Queen Camilla. And we knew this several months ago, but I think in the lead up to the coronation, it's great to go back through and revisit this crown, what it means, what we'll be seeing of it, and really how it's been used over the century since it was initially made. Because Queen Mary was rather interesting because she was the first ever dowager queen to attend her son's coronation. And she in fact wore a modified version of the crown that Queen Camilla will wear. And so we'll discuss that and why, for example, Queen Camilla isn't wearing Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth's crown. So yes, this is Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. She had a crown and it is still in the Tower of London. It is not being used for this coronation. There's a particular reason why that is and how they've decided to go ahead and use Queen Mary's crown, which actually fulfills something that Queen Mary wanted for a really, really long time. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal Fashion News, my name is Brittany and I talk about all things fashion and royal. So if you're interested in subscribing, I would love to have you back. And we do try to do TR Tuesdays every Tuesday. So if you love sparkly things, this is definitely the channel for you. So let's get back to it. Who was Queen Mary? Born Princess Victoria Mary of Tech. She married King George, or at that time, Prince George, and she eventually became queen. She was Queen Elizabeth's grandmother, and she actually attended the coronation with Elizabeth and her younger sister, Margaret. And unfortunately, she was still alive when Queen Elizabeth's father, King George VI, passed away, but unfortunately, she passed away before the coronation ceremony could occur. But it was quite difficult for her to not only lose her husband, but then to pretty quickly lose her son as well. And she is particularly known for being really be the force behind the fantastic tiara and jewelry collection the Brits have. She's the one who collected the vast majority of it. She grabbed a couple of things from the Romanovs as they left. And she also was responsible for helping to secure the Cullinan diamond. So this is the 3,106 karat raw rough diamond that was a flawless diamond. So it was a color was absolutely perfect and it was taken and made into nine different sizes or nine different main Cullinan diamonds in addition to some smaller brilliance and some additional rough cuts as well. And the Cullinan one diamond famously resides in the Imperial State Scepter and the Cullinan two resides in the Imperial State crown. These are massive diamonds. The Cullinan 1 is 530 carats. The Cullinan 2 is 317 carats. And then you go down and the sizes get smaller as time goes on. We have the Cullinan 3, which is 94 carats. The Cullinan 4, which is 63 carats. And the Cullinan 5, which is about 18 carats. Carrots. So these are very, very famous diamonds with a long history in the United Kingdom, and they were placed in the scepter, in the crown, and then they've also been used in various pieces. We've actually seen Queen Elizabeth a couple of times wear the Cullinan three and four as a brooch, with which Queen Mary started doing. She actually started out initially, she actually did the Cullinan one and two diamonds a couple of times as basically a massive brooch. And Queen Mary, we will do a whole video on her sometime because she really was the con connoisseur of diamonds and jewelry and just really had a keen eye for what looked really, really beautiful. Unfortunately, Queen Elizabeth II, her, her jewelry acumen was not quite as clear because you look at something like the aquamarine tiara and you're just kind of like, ugh, that, I, don't, I don't totally like that design. And then there's another tiara as well and I actually like the original design of it. So all this to say that Queen Mary just was very, very good at putting beautiful jewelry pieces together. And this crown is no exception. According to the Royal Collection Trust, the crown is composed of a silver frame lined with golds and it's set with 2,200 diamonds, many brilliant cut and also some rose cut as well. It has an open work band Band, and it featured at the time when she initially wore it the Cullinan 4, 
the Cullinan 3, in addition to the Kohenor Diamond. And we will get back to that a bit, but that was a massive 105 carats. So it was quite striking when the Kohenor was on the tiara. And of course, if you go and visit uh, once they finish up the coronation, if you go back and visit the Tower of London and the crown's been returned there, you'll see it has crystal rock replicas in its place. And so you'll notice, you know, look and go, those look very fake. Although I will say the, the diamond and the Imperial State crown, like the, the Cullinan diamonds, the scepter one and the crown one, they're so big, they do look fake. They do look fake. Even though the Cullinan one is probably the most would be the most expensive diamond ever sold in the whole world if it was sold because of its flawless clarity in addition to its historical significance as being part of the Cullinan collection. The Cullinan collection is all owned by the British royal family. And it also has a frieze with quarter foils, rosettes, each with a large brilliant at the center, surrounded by smaller stones between borders composed of single rows of brilliants. Above the band are four crosses pate and four, four fleur de lises. The front cross is where the coat nor diamond usually sits. The other three crosses are set in the center with a large diamond each. Each eight detachable arches taper towards the top and terminate in scrolls and contain six granulated brilliance between borders of stone. The Monde is a pave set diamond and at the top of the crown, and I didn't realize this at first, I had gotten a picture of it for actually a detailed history of this crown that I did and I didn't notice it at the time because somebody said initially to me that I got the picture of the wrong crown. FYI, I did not. That at the top there, the Cullinan 3 diamond, which is basically a smaller version of the Cullinan 1 diamond, they're both pear-shaped, it is at the top of the crown set in the cross. And the crown is fitted with purple velvet cap with an ermine band. And so Queen Mary, she wore this for the coronation and the Daily Telegraph at the time described it as it has no jewels but diamonds and the diamonds cluster together as if they had no support but their own weight. And the design was a reflection of Queen Alexandra's crown in 1902, which had similar elegant arches. And when it came time for King George VI to be crowned, she went ahead and took off the velvet cap and she took out most of the arches and just kept the basic circlet. And she wore that during her time as queen and afterwards as well. But because of the Kohenor diamond she had given it to her daughter-in-law, Queen Elizabeth, to use in her own crown, she had used the Cullinan 5 in Instead, which is part of a brooch. So that Queen Camilla is using it, this will be the first time a crown has been reused since the 18th century. And it also marks a rather critical occasion because at the time Queen Mary owned this crown and she made the decision or she thought or wanted to believe that she this crown could be used by future queen consorts in their own coronations. And so it was something that she wanted to be a tradition. So I imagine this will be something they go back to again for a long time. They would make a new crown for every queen for her coronation, but that's just not feasible anymore. And it just seems like a bit of a waste of money, especially when you have crowns within the Tower of London that you can use. But what's also interesting to consider as well is for a long time, they used to borrow the jewels they put in the crowns. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they used to borrow them and put them in the crowns and then give them back. Uh, Queen Mary was one of the ones responsible for actually saying, no, we're going to go ahead and purchase our diamonds so we can keep our diamonds so we can use them in the future. And so that is what happened in this occasion. And the reason the Queen Camilla is using this crown, I think, is for a lot of reasons. One, it's probably fairly easy for them to modify it. It won't be too difficult for them to do so. Obviously, it's already been placed and created for the Cullinan 3 and the Cullinan 4 diamond, so I don't think those will be too hard to fit in. The real challenge is that they can't use the Kohenor diamond. So the Kohenor diamond originally came from India. It was part of a peace agreement between the British government and representatives of uh, Indian forces. And so they went ahead and gave this diamond to Queen Victoria. It was more of a rough cut at the time. And so they went ahead and polished it and made it more brilliant. Actually, one of the rather ironic or you could say almost funny things about it is that it was a displayed at an exhibition because it had so few facets it didn't shine very well and people were just so unimpressed that they decided to cut it and make it smaller and it, but in, in addition making it more brilliant so you could see the the facets better and it would shine better which, which I think is kind of funny but there's a lot of people who believe that the Koh Noor diamond should be returned back to India even though it's actually claimed technically by four different countries this includes Pakistan I think 
think even Afghanistan and Iran all are the countries that claim the code nor diamond so it made it more difficult to use it in any future activities obviously there's a lot of push in recent years for various countries and museums to return some of the artifacts that they acquired and you could question it and say in less reputable ways than they are now. I have mixed feelings about that, but when it comes to the Koh Noor diamond, there's elements within the Indian government that would like it return and other people are like, do we really care that much? No, we don't care. So that they haven't returned it, I think makes sense, but also it makes wearing the Kohenor or using it very, very challenging. So what they're gonna do instead is they're gonna use the Cullinan 5 diamond. And the Cullinan 5 diamond is in a heart shape and so it won't be able to be used in the crown the same way the Kohenor was and so what they're planning on doing is they're probably they probably will set it in the crown in its brooch so they'll go ahead and do it that way so that might require some additional tinkering and being able to remove and set this so that it does make it something that can be easily used and easily worn. And obviously it will be somewhat heavy, but not quite as heavy as the St. Edward's crown. And I'm going to do a whole video on the St. Edward's crown. That is quite heavy. It weighs almost five pounds, which is very, very heavy. So most of the time the king or queen can only wear that during the coronation ceremony itself. Otherwise it's just way too heavy. The imperial state crown while heavy, it weighs a lot less than the St. Edward's crown. So according to the palace, the choice of Queen Mary's crown by her majesty is the first time in recent history that an existing crown will be used for the coronation of a consort instead of a new commission being made. In the interest of sustainability and efficiency, some minor changes and additions will be undertaken by the crown jeweler in keeping with the longstanding tradition that the insertion of jewels is unique to the occasion and reflects the consort's individual style. These changes will particularly pay tribute to her majesty Queen Elizabeth II as the crown will be reset with the Cullinan in three, four, and five diamonds. The diamonds were part of Queen Elizabeth II's personal jewelry collection for many years and were often worn by Her Late Majesty as brooches. The Cullinan diamonds have been set into Queen Mary's crown on previous occasions. Cullinan three and four were set temporarily in the crown for the 1911 coronation, and the Cullinan five was inserted when the crown was worn as a regal circlet at the King George VI coronation. And yes, once again, we went over that a couple of those items, but again, once again, important to remember that I don't really feel like these are Elizabeth's diamonds. I feel like they're always a bit more Queen Mary's diamonds because she was the one who commissioned them and kept them and actually made them into what they are today in many ways. But they were part of Her Majesty's personal collection, which is unique because you wanna make sure you avoid those inheritance taxes. So I'm sure Her Majesty considered them, even though they were her personal property, she really did consider them to be actually part of the crown and part of the state because that's where they belonged. She would have to give them to the future monarch to make sure that they kept within the line of succession. And when you see Her Majesty wear the Cullinan three and four diamonds, she famously called them Granny's Chips because Queen Mary, in addition to being a very much a connoisseur, it had a very keen eye for jewelry. She loved wearing as much jewelry as humanly possible. So she wore those quite a bit, even though they are very, very large diamonds. She was the one who wore them quite frequently. And so again, we have just so much to thank Queen Mary for in this instance. I think it's fantastic that they're reusing this crown. I'm interested to see how they'll make it unique to Queen Camilla. And this will be very interesting as well because we've had four coronations in the last 10 years and we've had ones in Belgium, Spain, the Netherlands, and Japan. But what's interesting particularly about Spain and Belgium is that both of those occasions, they were transfers of power between a king marred in controversy to another king in order to preserve the crown. And so there wasn't a grand occasion. And I think Spain would have had a grander occasion perhaps than Belgium because Spain obviously has a much, much longer tradition than the Belgians do in terms of having a kingship. But when it comes to the Netherlands, it's actually rather funny because although the Netherlands has one of the best, I feel like, jewelry collections outside the British Royals, 
because they have the Stuart diamond, they have a very, very impressive tiara collection. Their crown is actually fake. The, the actual crown that they, they don't really use it for the coronation, but it's there at the coronation. It's actually fake. And the most impressive jewelry worn was actually by the queen and he didn't wear a crown, the king didn't. And so you just have this very different dynamic when you have the Dutch. And so this will be the first time we really see somebody in a crown at their coronation. And this will be in a very, very elaborate affair. So it'll be interesting to see how this all comes together. And like I said, it's a beautiful crown and I can't, can't wait to see how Queen Camilla makes this crown her own. And so guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this really interesting and I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. Bye.